United States Special Envoy to Sudan, Scott Gretchen, is due to meet with the Sudanese officials in Khartoum Wednesday for talks on recent arrests of activists and staff at a DAFU radio station. Sudan's crackdown has been strongly criticized by the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Susan Rice. She says the arrests and shutdown of Radio Dabanga indicate an emerging pattern of harassment and intimidation by the government. Meanwhile, officials from northern and southern Sudan have postponed the meeting to discuss the disputed oil-rich Abia region, and there was a briefing in Washington last week on what is at stake. VOA's Carolyn Turner has more. Under Sudan's 2005 comprehensive peace deal, Sudan is due to hold two referendums on January 9th. The vote will determine whether the South becomes independent and whether the oil-rich Abaye region joins the North or the South. According to Ambassador Johnny Carson, the U.S. diplomatic surge is in response to a request for U.S. participation. The CPA parties and the Sudanese people are approaching crucial and critical milestones that will make critical decisions uh, along the way over the next uh, nine months. These decisions will also impact the lives of Kenyans, Ethiopians, Ugandans, Egyptians, and others. There is no agreement on fundamental issues such as borders, citizenship, and division of oil revenues. Preparations must be made in advance of the vote. Special Envoy to Sudan, Major General Scott Gratian, says time is running out. The entire world is watching and will make judgments based on how the parties approach these talks, on how they act in the next couple months. We urge both the NCP and the SPLM to take necessary efforts to cooperate and to demonstrate good faith. Specifically, we'll be watching the government of Sudan. By mid-November, the Southern Sudanese Voter Commission must hire, train, and deploy over 10,000 voter registration workers. Voting materials need to be distributed, and domestic and international monitors must be positioned to guard against manipulation. At the same time, other CPA issues must be resolved, and negotiators have been unable to decide who is entitled to vote in the referendum. At the United Nations, President Obama declared Sudan foreign policy to be a priority. Special Assistant to the President, Samantha Power, says this generated widespread interest from key heads of state. Communique that grew out of it constituted an unprecedented show of international unity uh, behind a couple key messages. One, that the referenda uh, must go off on time, that they must be peaceful, and that they must uh, reflect the will uh, of the people of South Sudan, and two, uh, that the countries in the international community, as represented in the communique and at this event in New York, uh, pledged to recognize the results of the referenda, irrespective of the outcome. Relations between the two sides remain strained, and the slow pace of preparations has raised concerns about clashes leading to war. But Major General Gratian says the U.S. is committed. There can be no peace in Sudan without peace in Darfur. As you can see, much remains to be done in the next few months by both parties. But the United States is committed to helping Sudan achieve a lasting peace. The U.S. wants Sudan to transfer funds to the Southern Sudan Referendum Commission and grant visas to international aid workers and protect the Southerners who are now living in the North. In return, the U.S. is moving towards better relations with Sudan to allow more trade and investment and lifting of economic sanctions. Carolyn Turner, VOA News.